Hi, this is for the documentary. Going to Tree Fort. They want a tree fork, Connor. How are you feeling? Good. Just doing work for everything. Let's get a little piecey over here. A little calendar. We got two interviews today. Connor, who are we talking to? Uh, Vika and Kid Bloom. Uh, Vika is from Spokane. I have not really done that much into Kid Bloom because you have. Ah, it's true. I've been looking. He, I don't know where he's from, but he's a, a fun little indie artist, and he just released a new project. Um, and he's Same towards, with Vika. He's towards the end of his tour. Um, so... Be fun to talk to him. What shows are we going to do today, Connor? Um, <laughs> let me pull it up. We are going to play on the boss. Uh, gonna try and catch Dawes and Lucius. Don't know because we have an interview right beforehand. Um, unable to catch one that I want to initially. Then obviously Kid Bloom and Vika because we're interviewing them today. There we go. It's a big day today, Connor. Big day. Yep. Good start to the day. Good start to the week. that I listen to still to this day and kind of reminisce about when I heard of them of or heard them the first time it's always friends telling you about it and it's always going to a show and live and recorded music are two completely separate things yeah I think with me and somehow like either it's like romanticism or the lack thereof if that makes sense, like, yeah. just, I don't know, it sounds so cheesy, but I get it. It writes good songs, man. It does. <laughs> um, yeah, like, you know, like the, um, how do I put this? The, the nerve that is attached to that side of human emotion, like the longing for someone else, the loving someone else, whatever, whatever. It, it is a, I love that place mm -hmm. to write from. It's, it's a lot of introspectiveness in that too, you know what I mean? But it is, uh, I mean, the Beatles basically only wrote it about that. So. But you know what I mean? Uh, girls, writing songs about girls. <laughs> You guys also very like bluesy, very influenced by. It felt very like Amy Winehouse. I there it is. I was that. like, there you go. <laughs> it's very influenced by. Yeah, Amy. for sure. I mean, I take a lot of inspiration from many things, but um, her styling and phrasing—it's always been something in the back of my head. I feel like I've changed a lot recently. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, do you want to, that was kind of my next segue. So you kind of started out in that more like traditional like indie pop kind mm -hmm. of influences and you've recently moved into this much more like blues, jazz kind of space. Kind of what led to that in your artistry and like in that like move in your band? Um, we had a switch up of players and I met my guitarist, Eric, who honestly helped me a lot. He he didn't necessarily change my style, but I feel like playing with new people 
kind of opens up new doors for you. My brother is a jazz pianist and percussionist. He lives in LA and he started playing with us. So actually the most recent single, Lovely Little Games, was written with him. So a lot of the inspiration comes from him as well. Nice. Um, he was the one who got me started in music as like a 13 year old. So I owe a lot to him, honestly. So what do you think are like your goals going forward for your music and for the band? Definitely going on tour. That's been my main goal ever since I was younger. Um, feels like it could be happening soon. Connor, day two of tree fort. How was day one? Well, apart from me breaking my tripod and possibly my own back, um, amazing. Uh, met two amazing artists, Kid Bloom and Vika and the Velvets. Both amazing people. So much fun to interview. Their show's so much fun. Kid Bloom and Vika both recognize us, which is always a cool thing. Um, I got close to 300 photos yesterday. Um, it was a lot of fun. Didn't get home until really late. And now it's an early, early morning to go and interview the French cassettes. What else are we doing today, Connor? Besides a chiropractic appointment for you. Yeah. Um, if I remember correctly, today we actually have two interviews. Mm -hmm. French cassettes and Amoeba Arena. Amoeba Arena, we're interviewing right after their show. French cassettes, we are interviewing, well, in less than an hour now. And that's going to be interesting because they announced that they're releasing their third album yesterday. Less than 24 hours. So we're gonna possibly be one of the first people to interview them and ask them about their new album. I think the thing that you're supposed to say is it's your happiest work, it's the thing you're most proud of. That happens to be the case for me. Um, I just, I, I think I said it in a blurb somewhere, so I'm repeating myself, but I was in a weird space when I started it and uh, I'm just, really happy to f for the songs to even be finished in the first place uh, and I'm just really proud of how it sounds. Of the three that we've released, uh, I think maybe the uh, the second one we released, Baseball Bat, is kind of my favorite. Um, yeah, I knew I'd agree with you. Yeah, it's my favorite too. For me personally, uh, reasons to get out of bed and out of the house. And uh, like I said, some, some of the things I'm most happy, like these songs are things that I'm most happy about that we've done and we've been playing for a long time. So it's really important to me and means a lot when anyone, you know, like this, like anyone even wants to ask questions about it. So we have a, a single in the works, or, or maybe a couple singles, but yeah, just two new songs, and then we're hoping to go on tour with those two in the EP that we just released, and uh, hopefully start an album maybe next year or later this year. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. That's super exciting. Um, what is like your big musical influences? Do you have anything that really? Well, <laughs> him and I are cut from the same cloth in a lot of capacities. We are, and we're all kind of, we come from different kind of uh, backgrounds of musical interests. Um, we are both very much into the Midwest emo side of things. Um, we bonded, math rock, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we bonded over like Glockamora, um, Algernon Cadwallader, uh, Cadwallader, um, and Joyce Manor, yes. Um, a bunch of those types of things. Um, kind of and, uh, like, kind of a, a 
DIY emo revival. Uh, some call it like fourth wave emo, but kind of just like in reference to like the 90s alt rock emo scene. So American football is huge too. But yeah. And you guys? I'd say the two of us. Sorry. I'd say the two of us are like also kind of cut from similar cloth. Uh, but instead of being uh, in the more like Midwest emo side of things, we're more influenced by like the Pacific Northwest side of things, so, like the grunge movement in the 90s. Uh, we're also both pretty big into psych rock, like specifically Australian psych rock. Uh, and I think our music reflects a blend of like those two sides. Definitely. It was uh, very nice to see so many familiar faces in the crowd too. Like I felt like I recognized most of the all people of in yeah, that yeah, crowd. Day three of Tree Fort. Yeah. How are we feeling? How was day two? Pretty good, pretty good. Um, saw some really good shows. Finished up the first side of the roll on my film recording camera. So hopefully this works out because it's like 50 year old film. Don't know. Looking forward to day three, our biggest interview day. We have four different interviews at once. Not at once, but oh, at once would be absurd. Yeah. No, I think I, I think I would die. Yeah. Um, and then we're going to a few shows today. We, we probably have four or five shows that we're going to. Yeah, because um, we have two bands we're interviewing this morning. We then have their shows later today that we're going to. Then we have mm -hmm. two bands we're interviewing around about noon that are then later in the day as well. So it's pretty much all today is just interviewing bands and going to their shows. Um, lately, I've been listening to Fanagram, and that's been kind of like the most current one, but I feel like it always changes. This is like way back in probably high school, you know, watching, uh, gosh, I want to say I went to some random live show just to go catch, I think the, the band was stained actually, but their openers crossfade or, uh, back in the day. I was like, that looks so much fun. That looks, they make this look so enjoyable and I want to, I want to chase that. And then after, I mean, after that, I was just falling in love with like different artists and music, so Man, similar like back in high school, there were uh, local shows with touring bands, and uh, when I was first exposed to it, it was like, you know, something hits you. Like, a bunch of strangers get up on stage in a tiny club with like 50 people watching them, and like you get to hang out and kind of like get connected for the night. And it, it was cool. I mean, I'm, I'm still here. I don't want to say how old I am, but. <laughs> <laughs> Music has been around for the majority of my life. So. Yeah. I grew up in a, a small town that's like 60 miles south of Billings, which is where we're all from, Billings, Montana. And we had something for a long time called the Festival of Nations. And my friend's mom booked the music part of the Festival of Nations, and there was this band that I think was based out of Missoula, Montana, that came around often, and they were called the Clumsy Lovers. And they were very like high energy, kind of blue, blue grassy, fun, catchy songs. And my friend and I would just like chaotically dance the whole time to any clumsy lovers show. <laughs> so I feel like that's the most like visceral memory I have of being young and enjoying live music and being inspired by it and just like yeah, connecting for the night with everybody that's yeah. there, it's the clumsy lovers. I was born in Boston, um, moved to New Hampshire when I was a kid, and then I moved to Montana when I was 18. Nice. What kind of went into moving to Montana? Well, um, I met a boy, <laughs> and I um, had a crush on him immediately, 
and uh, he he wanted to go out to Montana, and I actually did as well. Um, I had gotten into the University of Montana in Missoula. Um, I just wanted to get out, get out of the East Coast, get out of my small town that I had grown up in, and I really needed something new. So I jumped in his car and followed him out west, and we're still together to this day. I learned, um, my, my mom, um, along with being a uh, classical performer, also taught voice at the University of New Hampshire. Um, so I, what I think, especially now having been at this for over 10 years, um, is that my, my parents gave me a great foundation. And then I, I, I veered off and broke a lot of the rules, especially vocally. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of coming back to the foundation of which, um, you know, I, I'm relearning, or maybe not relearning, but remembering how to use my instrument in such a way that it won't damage my vocal cords and take care of myself. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it, it, I'm very grateful to have had that foundation, you know, to have learned that at a, at a young age. Um, so. I saw that you uh, just released a new album at the beginning of this month, Bullhead. Uh, do you want to talk about that, kind of what went into that process? Um, yeah, just kind of a couple years of um, just sort of chilling and thinking about uh, what I wanted to do next after the album that came before it. Um, and then I kind of figured that I wanted to hit up my friend Nick Noneman and just kind of keep a really small work flow kind of group thing going on you know and just sort of pound out as many songs as we could um, yeah that's pretty much it um, it was interesting I mean we had kind of decided to take a little bit of a break before COVID actually and then we did a tour that kind of lined up right with COVID starting um, so I just sort of figured that I would just do something else with music um, but as the story usually goes it you know you just return back to what you're comfortable with well, the movie School of Rock with Jack Black <laughs> is probably what made me start playing guitar. Um, Nirvana, too, was like a big thing when I was like a little kid, you know? But I mean, I, I would credit that movie. We <laughs> haven't announced yeah. anything yet, but like, I guess we kind of have. We yeah. do have a new album coming. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. <laughs> the single I figured an album might right. be yeah. in the future. We'll be so. announcing it with like our next single that comes out officially. So yeah. we're really, really pumped to kind of start this new chapter. And, the Eighth Wonder chapter was incredible, and one of our favorite shows actually was here in Boise yeah. at the Tree Fort. Yeah, at the Tree Fort venue. Yeah. Uh, we usually say like indie folk pop. Yeah. Um, someone at one of our last shows, like at a meet and greet, said they classified us as adventure pop. Yeah, so adventure was, pop. We don't know what it means, cool. but we liked it. Yeah. So. I, did, I, I heard someone say granola pop. Granola oh, pop. And so I feel like that's pretty, yeah. pretty up there. That's yeah. Cool. interview schedule start out early early morning I think it was 11 30 I think or was it even earlier it was 11 so much happened I'm trying to remember first band because I know we had on, Gilda House number one and then yeah, we did because like, I remember it was we went straight from Gilda House to Madeline Hawthorne and then we had Slow Hollow or no it went National Park Slow Hollow mm-hmm um then while the national parks interview was going on i was taking photos at gilda house which amazing band by the way love their music um then after the slow hollows interview we then grabbed some dinner and went down to the national park show after that you and i went and kind of walked around town because the two other shows which were Slow Hollows and Madeline Hawthorne, they were 21 and up, and I'm 20 still. Three days down, how are you feeling about the whole trip? Feeling good. Yeah, the writing process was awesome. It was um, kind of an accumulation of a lot of things we'd been working on. Um, we got together in 2021, and we took our time to like really get to know each other, and then um, kind of jam and just build out from there. Um, Zora and I wrote a lot of the lyrics for it, and um, yeah, it was just very fluid. 
I think it was pretty organic, honestly. <laughs> I think we just came together as a group of musicians who uh, and uh, didn't really have like a ulterior motive or like we want to make this kind of sound or this kind of record mm-hmm. or this kind of genre of music. We just um, got together and it's six people, really different backgrounds, and we just organically had to negotiate how those all intersect and how those fit together. Um, and so, like Francesca alluded to earlier, like um, it took a long time uh, to write all these songs and it was sort of this organic formation practice and I think the record really encapsulates just that first stage of our band. I mean a lot of us are queer (laughs) (laughs) Um, and even when I like set out to create the band I knew I wanted to center that narrative of like marginalized identities Um, so that's like the like on the posters that I put up that's what I was looking for Um, but I really just felt like that story wasn't being highlighted enough in media um, at least not from like a fir- like a first person experience. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah. Do you want to talk about it? Yeah. I mean, it's just I feel like it would be weirder if we didn't. Right? <laughs> 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 it's such a we're, we're, it's such a big part of our experiences, you know, and a part of our community, like all of our community. Like we have such a wonderful group of like queer, like, gender f***ed, like, oh, f***. <laughs> 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 okay. That's what um, I'm Gender for. fluid. Gender fluid. <laughs> gender fluid um, <laughs> homies and, like, queer homies. And it's just, it's our lives, right? Like, it's, sure. it's, it's mm. everything. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's something about the album that, like, we're both talking about um, the systems of, of oppression that affect us, but also we're talking a lot about um, strength and healing and actualization in the face of that. Well, the common denominator with all that is just like a radical love. So, yeah. 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 done with tree fort yes we are we're finally done just dropped off abigail alelia's watching one final show before going back and going to bed as well and we are finally done some things we could improve on for sure but i think overall we only got nine interviews should have had ten should have had (laughs) ten a band didn't show up and with what we had at hand we did so much. I mean, we had tech issues. My tripod literally broke first day into my camera, so I couldn't use my camera for recording. And we had to use her phone gimbal. Like, just the insane issues we had. And we still came through on top. Yeah. What was your favorite show from this trip? Favorite show? One that I actually saw all the way through, Gilda House. Follow us on Instagram, uh, KUI. Um, follow us on Twitter, go to our website, check out all the galleries with photos that Abigail, Mark, and I took.